Centuries of building towns and burning firewood has left the UK with far fewer forests than most other countries in Europe. But this year, several massive efforts are underway to help re-blanket Britain with trees. Through the work of civil servants like Jim Lee, who drove us through his local countryside in Northumberland to visit a managed forest called Slaley. We're the largest land manager um, in England. As head of woodland creation at Forestry England, a government agency partially funded by taxpayers, he told us he wants to help rebuild hundreds of rural woodlands by planting 5,000 acres over the next five years. It's a relatively modest contribution from Forestry England, but it allows us to start on that journey to be a serious force in woodland creation in England. His group is just one of many here, some public, some private, working to expand carbon capture capacity by together planting an area the size of Manhattan every 10 weeks. Big picture for people who don't know anything about the forestry industry in this country. How ambitious are these targets that have been set? Hugely ambitious. You know, it's a, it's a tenfold increase in woodland creation targets, really. And we've got a government which is four square behind that. Is and, it achievable? It. it is. The offers that we have available are, are really revolutionising, I think, the approach to woodland creation in this country. These new subsidy offers from the UK central government allow landowners that want to create new woodland to draw on almost a billion dollars of fresh funding. Forestry England helps select then support suitable sites, leasing the land from owners in some cases or else offering payments to plant trees rather than plough fields. The past few months, Lee's helped sift through dozens of applications, ranging from small governments to large private landowners, to see if they meet requirements. When we have these sites come through, we'll assess all of them and we'll pick out those ones where we can make the most impact for nature recovery and for carbon sequestration. This past August, Laura Redhead and Paul McKay won approval from Forestry England for the City Council where they work, which just a year earlier had decided to transform these 150 acres of fields into a forest. It's what needs to happen, it's part of the pathway to, you know, um, zero carbon. Um, it's an essential pathway. And the pair told us they're happy to have added the word woodland to their otherwise ordinary job titles. Tractors have been driving into this field for decades and they've been ploughing and sowing here for centuries. But give it three months and they'll be planting trees. Give it three years, there'll be 81,000 saplings here. Give it three decades and this whole area will be forest. This wheat field turned Woodland's new owner will be the ancient city of York, which declared a climate emergency in 2019. Paula Widowson is the city councilwoman responsible for environment. It will be a carbon sink. The posh word that everybody uses is carbon sequestration, but I can't spell that, so I, I prefer carbon sink. It's also massive on biodiversity, so the more plants we can get, the more animals we'll get, the more insects we get, the better it is. Transforming a few fields will offset just a fraction of the city's carbon emissions, but Widowson says the project will encourage action elsewhere. On its own, York cannot prevent a climate crisis. If we wanted to mitigate everything that's going on, we would have to do a hundred of these woods. So we've done one percent. However, by putting it up, by making it happen, we've introduced people to the idea they can make a difference. But not all trees are created equal when it comes to carbon capture. So as similar efforts scale up across Britain, scientists are racing to understand the most effective forest combinations. If you want to change the way that people understand, get rewarded and all the rest of it, you have to be able to do like-for-like -like kind of comparison. Hundreds of miles away in the hills of central Wales, a non-profit called the Carbon Community hopes to identify this important data. Founder Charles Nichols showed us around the growing Glandower Forest, the largest tree carbon capture experiment in Britain. It really started with a big idea, which is, could we make new forest creation you know, fundamentally better at sequestering carbon? And if we could, then all of those national initiatives to plant you know, so many thousands of acres uh, could be made dramatically more effective. More than 25,000 trees over 26 acres are split into eight treatment zones with separate tree types and soil additions that allow scientists to monitor the carbon capture effectiveness of various combinations. You need to take multiple samples, you need to take them as a baseline before you plant and after you plant and you know, several years on, etc. 
it is very expensive. You basically have to burn the sample in order to then understand how much energy is in it, and that will tell you how much organic carbon is stored in the soil. Elsewhere in Wales, a carbon capture giant from California is capturing imaginations. Wait, can I fill it in? Let's do it together. Like any other tree, the sequoia starts life as a tiny sapling. But unusually, it can grow to 250 feet tall and lock up hundreds of tonnes of carbon dioxide over thousands of years. That one's good, that talks to me. Graham and Angela Bond are marking their 40th wedding anniversary by planting one together. In 3,000 years' time, it'll be in the, hopefully in the same spot. That's quite an emotional experience. Recently recovered from surgery to remove a brain tumour, Graham's celebrating life by offsetting a lifetime of carbon emissions. If one tree can soak up, what is it, 1,400 tonnes of carbon, it's an amazing thing the planet can do to, um, to replenish itself. For the legacy he's leaving on this hillside, he's paid a for-profit enterprise about $700. Oh, no, I think you're in a good spot. Henry Emson runs this business called One Life, One Tree and says the price tag provides value for money. It's showing people there's something that they can do about their carbon footprint. For the price of half a mobile phone, managing to do something to take out your entire lifetime carbon footprint is an affordable price for the outcome. Available land in Britain is limited, and Emson says this private project can complement other public programmes. I don't imagine for a second that we should be covering the UK in sequoias. What I do think is that we need to think carefully about tree planting strategy for the purpose of addressing climate change. Few countries on Earth have enough free land for forests to offset all existing emissions. But for many, like Britain, it's one of several tools that in combination could help them hit their net zero targets.